Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath, church. How many of us are super duper excited to be in the house of the Lord? Let me see your hands. Praise the name of the living God. Praise the name of the living God. Amen, amen, amen. Now, I need to tell you something before we can get started. Uh, you need to forgive me for not wearing a suit. Pastors must preach in suits. Am I right? Yeah, but this one is asking for permission to continue to stand before all of you in this regalia. By the way, I am also encouraged to see that the choirs are in a regalia like mine and the choristers. So at least I'm not completely lost, right? <laughs> yeah, at least I'm not completely lost. All right. Um, without further ado, I want us to get to the apocalyptic book of Daniel. I'll request you to stand with me. Why? Because I realize you must have been seated for quite some time. Just stretch your legs. There is no spiritual significance whatsoever. I just want blood to run down through your legs as we read the word of God together. Is that fine with everybody? Is that fine with everybody? Let's just stand as we read the word of God, as you stretch your legs. Just stand with me where you are, where possible. Daniel, the 60th chapter, verse 1 to 3. Now, we are going to dwell in Daniel chapter 6, so please don't turn or close your Bible. If you are using your phone, make sure your phone is on. We will stick to that chapter, chapter 6. Make sure you don't lose that page. So the 60th chapter of Daniel, the 60th chapter of Daniel, verse 1. I'm using the New King James Version of the Bible, and the Bible says, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps, to be over the whole kingdom. And over these, three governors. How many governors? Some of your versions use the phrase, presidents other versions use the phrase administrators mine uses governors of whom daniel was one that the satraps might give an account to them so that the king would suffer no loss then this daniel distinguished himself above the governors administrators or presidents and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm that's enough. In the next few minutes, I want to teach and preach with God's help and guidance using the topic, I wish God was my witness, my weakness. I wish God was my weakness. Let us pray. Lord, I beg you to show up in this place. May I disappear so that your message can appear. May I decrease as you increase alone. Father, this is your show. This is your church. These are your people. Do your thing. In Christ's name I beg. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I solicit for your prayers even as I began to run through the text. I wish God was my weakness. The king of Babylon, Darius the Mede, soon after ascending to the throne of Babylon, Darius sets to make arrangements for governing his kingdom in the best effective possible manner. So the king divides his kingdom into 120 provinces. After dividing his kingdom in 120 provinces, the king now appoints 120 satraps. The satraps were the rulers. They were the subordinate rulers. In today's language, you may call them the members of parliament, over in charge over 120 provinces, who were subordinate rulers over the 120 provinces. Now, over the 120 satraps or members of parliament, who were over the 120 provinces, the king further went on to appoint three administrators, presidents or governors, who were under the direct control of the king. Now, the Bible says Daniel was one of the three presidents. Daniel was one of the three governors. He was one of the three administrators. Follow me, church. The task of these three governors 
administrators or presidents, their responsibility was to oversee the affairs of the kingdom. They were to ensure that the 120 satraps or members of parliament did no damage to the king nor embezzle any finances from the kingdom. But now, of the three administrators, <laughs> of the three governors or presidents, the king, stay with me church, the king was giving thought and planning to make one of the administrators to become the chief president administrator of the entire kingdom. Is the church with me this morning? The administrator who the king was contemplating about making the chief president administrator over the two other presidents and the 120 satraps or members of parliament was a foreigner who was taken captive. And his name is Daniel. You see, friends, we are not told why King Darius was planning to create a new office of chief president administrator over the other presidents and the satraps, but we are told why Daniel was being considered to fill this new office. Come with me, church. In verse 3, verse 3, the Bible tells us that this foreign captive was being considered because there was a reason. He was being considered for this new portfolio. He was being considered for this new position. Why? Because the Bible says there was an excellent spirit found in him. The spirit within Daniel was preeminent over, beyond, and above others. There was a charismatic grace about Daniel. There was the spirit of divinity in Daniel. There was godliness in the soul of this noble statesman. Ladies and gentlemen, there was no flaw in the attitude of Daniel. Now, 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 if you miss me here, you are lost. So you need to stay with me closely. If then Daniel, check this out. If then Daniel had become the chief president administrator of the other two presidents and the other 120 satraps, Daniel's integrity, what have I said? Daniel's integrity would have posed a serious problem to the other leaders. Mm -hmm. Daniel's honesty would have become a monumental barrier to the wicked ambitions and aspirations of the two other administrators and 120 members of parliament. Daniel's consecrated character would have become a thorn in the flesh. His consecrated character would have caused and brought about some uncomfortable climate for his colleagues. Now, take note of the fact let me draw your attention microscopically to the text. Come with me to the text. Take note of the fact that the text indicates that Daniel had not yet been promoted. The king was only contemplating and planning to promote him. Okay, okay, okay. So you missed it. Let me come down your lane again. Take note of the fact that the text indicates that Daniel had not yet received the promotion. He had not yet received the elevation. The king was only planning and contemplating to promote him. Just the thought of Daniel being promoted caused Daniel to become a victim of what I call the twin sins of envy and jealousy. Let me come down again. I'm saying just the thought of Daniel being elevated to this new position, he, it made him become a victim of the twin sins of envy and jealousy. Church of God, envy and jealousy are attitudes. But when they are allowed to become dominant in the human heart, when envy and jealousy take resident in the human heart. When envy and jealousy develop roots in the human heart, envy and jealousy can go from a bad attitude to bad actions. Come with me, church. Jealousy is the oddest type of sin. Mm. Jealousy is the oddest type of sin. Listen to me, church. Jealousy tends to be personal. Why? Because jealousy targets an individual who is perceived as a rival and a threat. 
I believe that the spirit of jealousy is one of the sins that have rocked down this church today. Friends, it was jealousy that contributed to the downfall of Lucifer. It was jealousy that overwhelmed Abel, motivating him to murder his brother. It was jealousy that led Joseph's brothers to sell him as a slave. It was jealousy that led King Saul, wanting to eliminate the young man David. It was jealousy that ultimately led to the arrest and the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, in case it's not clear jealousy is the raw material for murder that's why if you have a jealous spirit this morning that alone will keep you from having a right relationship with Jesus you know why jealousy tortures affections Jealousy vexes the mind. Jealousy inflames the blood. Jealousy corrupts the heart. Jealousy becomes a man's tormentor and a man's executioner at the same time. Somebody said, jealousy is the last class to attend before becoming a full-fledged witch. I hope the church is with me this morning. Jealousy is a terrible disease and cancer. Get well soon. Can you imagine? I'm in the text. Come with me. Can you imagine? Daniel had not yet received the promotion. Daniel had not yet received the blessing. In other words, his blessing was only just being cooked. It was not yet ready. He had not yet received the elevation. But at the thought of him being blessed and highly favored caused these jealous leaders to start hating on him. They hated on him because his blessing was on the way. They hated on him because his blessing was within the horizon. They hated on him because his blessing was in the pipeline. They hated on him to the point where they now devised a wicked diabolical evil plot and plan against the man of God. Come with me to verse 4. Let me show you something in verse 4. Daniel chapter 6. Verse 4 says that the two other presidents, what have I said? The two other administrators. Remember, there were three presidents. So now, the other two presidents, those that shared the same office with Daniel. And the Bible says in verse 4, the two other presidents and administrators and the 120 satraps, <laughs> the junior rulers, they sought to find an occasion against Daniel. Oh, beloved friends, stay with the preacher. Hoping to hinder this coming blessing and promotion on Daniel. Daniel's colleagues from the same office, excuse me, from the same church, from the same Sabbath school, united with their 120 junior rulers to plot against Daniel's downfall. Beloved friends, it is... <laughs> it is incredible. Are we together? Stay with me, stay with me. It is incredible. It is mind-baffling. It is flabbergasting. How people... Recruit others in hating people. Can I be real with you? Can I be real with you? There are some people in your life right now this morning who hate you, who despise you, who resent you with every fiber of their being, not because you wronged them, but because they are just recruited haters. Recruited haters. They don't know their agenda. They have just joined the bandwagon of hating you for no reason. Let me be real with you. They hate you because those who are closer to you have decided to hate you. They don't like you from a distance because their friends who are in proximity to you don't like you. They naturally don't like your family, your home and your wife because they borrowed their hatred vibes and negative energy from your enemies. I'm in the text this morning. Hoping to block 
Daniel's promotion, these jealousy, scoundrels, cantankerous haters, they began scrutinizing Daniel's dealings with the kingdom books. <laughs> They were hoping to find something incorrect. They were hoping to find something inconsistent. They were hoping to find something incriminating. They were hoping to find something unexplainable in his dealings with kingdom affairs. I thank heavens tonight. I thank heavens this morning that to their shock, they found no fault, no occasion against Daniel. In Italiano, we say, niente. There was nothing they could find to use against Daniel. With all their secret investigations, they found Daniel was faithful to the interest of the kingdom. They searched. I mean, I mean, they searched. They searched, but they found that Daniel was trustworthy. They searched and found out that there were no shady dealings anywhere near Daniel. They kept on searching, but they found out that every judgment Daniel made, every deed he did, every order he gave, there were no false balances. Books were always balancing. Not one dirty footprint, not one tangled thread, not one question mark. They discovered your boy was above bribery. He was above corruption. Now, 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 now. <laughs> It's not in the text, but permit me to suggest this. What further intensified their opposition towards Daniel was money. Let me try it again. Let me try it again because someone is sleeping. Let me suggest that what further intensified their momentum and velocity to hit on Daniel and to increase in their opposition towards Daniel was because there were some financial implications. How do I know? Well, I'm glad you asked. The Bible says the love of money is the root of how much evil? All evil. Now, in the text, I see an evil plot. <laughs> in the text, I see mechanisms of man. In the text, I see an evil coming together. I see an evil meeting. And the Bible says, it's the love of money, which is the root of all evil. There is evil in the text, planned against Daniel. Therefore, there's got to be some love of money nearby. There's got to be some money connection nearby. They detested Daniel because they knew that based upon Daniel's character and behavior, Daniel would be over everything. And so, there would be no chance for illicit gratuities. No kickbacks. Nothing under the table. No hope for fraud. No chance for foul play. No way to juggle the books. There would be no opportunity to embezzle funds with Daniel at the head of this new office. They knew they would go broke. They knew that their dealings would be discovered and they would not take the kingdom anywhere. And so they were aware of the implications of allowing Daniel to sit on this new position. Ladies and gentlemen, they were afraid. Check this out. Now here's my favorite part. If you are sleeping, wake up. Check this out. They now turn their spotlights from Daniel's character to his religion. <laughs> Stay with me, church. They now seek to use Daniel's godliness against him. Beloved friends, permit me to submit this to the church in Kampala this Sabbath. This story is a clear indication of how the devil really works. It does not matter how many victories you undertake in your Christian experience. It does not matter how successful your Christian life looks like today. It does not matter how popular and a celebrated elder you are in church. That does not matter. Always remember that evil is relentless. Evil does not give up. Evil works 24-7 days a week. Ladies and gentlemen, the devil does not take vacation. 
The devil does not go on a break. He is working around the clock. The Bible says he is behaving like a rolling lion looking for someone to devour. That's why, friends, let me submit this today. That a part-time Christian cannot overcome a full-time devil. So many of us think we can overcome the devil when we pray inconsistently. So many of us think we can knock out the devil when we come to church only when we are broke. So many of us think we can overcome the vows and the snares from the pits of the devil when we are so much part-time. We are casual Christians. Ladies and gentlemen, it's only hardcore Christians that have the power of Jesus and it's the power of Jesus which has the power to tame the power of the devil. This devil is relentless. After checking his character, they found no loophole. They now turn to his religion. Friends, <laughs> oh friends, they now figured out that the only way to assassinate Daniel is at the level of his God. Okay, okay, you missed it. The only place, what have I said? The only place they could destroy Daniel was at the God level. Where it concerned God, Daniel couldn't help it. Where it concerned God, Daniel was vulnerable. Where it concerned God, Daniel was weak. Now, I have a confession to make here. And here comes the confession. I wish I could be like Daniel. I wish that God was my only weakness. I wish that my obvious and apparent vulnerable spot was only God. How I wish that the only place that I can be ruined, fixed, or destroyed is at the God level. How I wish that the only thing my enemies could use against me is God. How I wish I had the character of Daniel this morning. You know why? Because how powerful I would be if God was my only weakness. Can I tell you what? Actually, actually, if God was my only weakness, let me tell you what's going to happen. If God was my only weakness, God would turn my actual weakness into a cocoon. And my weakness would become cancelled and inverted. And my weakness would become my strength. And when my enemies attack me at the God level, they would cease to attack me and start attacking the God of my weakness. And the God of my weakness is a mighty warrior that has never lost a battle. You see, friends, when you stand on the side of Jesus, you are standing on the winning side. When you stand on the side of Jesus, you are standing on the side of a champion. When you stand on the side of Jesus, you are standing on a side that does not lose. It has never lost and it will never lose a battle. Now check this out. I'm in the text. When the 122 conspirators came together <laughs> in parliament, 122 conspirators Remember, there are two presidents here. And the rest are the 120 members of parliament. When they came together, they further shifted their attention to the weakness of King Darius. Church, if you miss me here, you are lost. Stay with me. I'm saying when they came together, they now zoomed in the weakness of the king who was on the throne. This pagan king. They attempted to fix Daniel by winning the king on their side with flattery. With flattery. That was the formula. By the way, flattery is insincere and excessive praise aimed at appealing to one's ego. Flattery is manipulation, not communication. That's why, friends, be careful when men strike and stroke your narcissistic pathological ego. Be careful when men tickle and massage your ego. Be careful when men give you too much praise in your hearing. Be careful when men play with your emotions. What do I mean? These guys combined flattery with falsehood in order to manipulate King Darius. Are we together? What did they do? They combined falsehood and flattery. Now somebody said, Pastor, how do you know? I got evidence. It's in verse 7. Look at verse 7. Can you almost see them coming to the king's chamber and palace? They begin by saying in verse 7, King Darius, live forever. 
<laughs> they said, all the three presidents, including your favorite boy, we have heard Daniel, he is also part of this caucus, I mean, this caucus and censure, I mean, and, 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 and agreement. All the three presidents, the 120 satraps, counselors and captains, they have all agreed on a decree. We are going to make you a god for one month. Hello? They said that all the subjects in the kingdom must not pray to any god except your throne. This is falsehood and flattery at its highest bevel level. At its best. In other words, they are saying all religious prayers in the kingdom for 30 days will have the king's name in them. And the penalty for disobedience will be death by being thrown into the den of lions. In other words, they manipulated the king with falsehood and flattery. Friends, be careful with people that flatter you in this life. Some of these praises we receive are not genuine. Some of these congratulations, when they come on your phone, just acknowledge them and don't allow them to get to your heart. Because it's not everyone who's for you. By the way, even in the church, there are people that don't like you. Even in God's house, there are people who are jealous of you. But when they see you, they're going to pamper you. They'll flatter you with all the nice words. Never allow flattery to get to your mind. Because flattery is manipulation and not communication. Now look at this. The king was captivated. This guy fell for this falsehood and empty flattery. And the king signs this decree into a law, passed by parliament. It's a law for one month. Now, according to the laws of this land, once a document of this caliber and nature was signed, it cannot be revoked, even by the king himself, until the expiration date. Now, 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 when the news went viral, in Kampala, when the news of this new one-month law reached and hit the tabloids and the newspapers and the streets of Babylon, what could Daniel have done when he learned about this disturbing law? Well, your boy Daniel had several options up his sleeves. Well, well, Daniel could have postponed his prayers for 30 days. After all, it's only three day, 30 days to be over. Or he could have prayed in bed at night in secret. Or he could have left Babylon at prayer times he sneaks out to the wilderness. Or he could have closed the windows, drawn the curtains and shut the door. But what Daniel could have done was not what Daniel did. So you missed it. Let me say it again. I thank heavens that what Daniel could have done, he had other options way out, but what he could have done was not what Daniel did. You see, friends, Daniel had a radical commitment to God. And this commitment was an open, public, unashamed, and unapologetic commitment. Daniel had a tough mind and a praying heart. Daniel had no hide away devotion. Daniel had no behind the door loyalty. Daniel had no chameleon religion. Daniel only feared God and he was willing to die for prayer. Church of God, let me submit real quick this morning. Most of us have chameleon religion. You know what chameleon religion is? It's a religion where you hide what you believe in and whose you belong to. When you get in an environment of drunkards, you easily blend in. Because I've discovered it's like in the 21st century, it's no longer a cool thing to be a Jesus buddy. Talking about Jesus in an environment where people don't talk about Jesus seems not to be a cool thing. So most of us, we lose our identity in Jesus when we are in secular different environments. Church of God, let me just submit this this morning. That a Christian belongs to Jesus. A Christian is proud of Jesus. A Christian is not ashamed. Wherever you are, speak like Paul. For I am not ashamed 
of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why, Paul? For it is the power of God unto salvation. Chameleon religion is on the increase in the church of God today. That's why you find a lot of Christians packed in a church like this and never meet them on the battlefield of life. It's like we only come to church for a sociological event and not a theological, spiritual, ecstatic, life-changing experience. No wonder the church today seems to be powerless. That's why we can't overcome the devil anymore. We fall for temptations. There is womanizing in the church of God today. Adultery is in the church of God today. People have lost the fear of God. Chameleon religion. Church of God. When you know Jesus. And you live for Jesus. You will be proud of Jesus. You will not be apologetic about Jesus. I am a Christian. By the way, by the way. Let me step on your toes. I am a Christian first before I'm an Adventist. Yeah. Christianity is my identity. Adventism is my mission. Some of us are known as those guys who don't eat pork and bubble fish. They don't know us as Christians. Some of us are identified by the name of the Sabbath. We are Sabbatarians but not Christians. Some of us are vegetarian. But we have never been to the cross. Friends, you can be a vegetarian until you turn blue. Without Jesus, you are going to hell. I am in the text this morning. Daniel only feared God. And this dude was ready to die for prayer. And so now check this. Check it out. Check it out. When well, Daniel was down on his knees, giving thanks to God as if there is no new law, <laughs> as if the constitution has not changed, as if the weather has not changed, as if people are not running havoc and losing their mind, as if nothing has changed, he continued the same custom. That's why I'm saying, I wish I was like Daniel this morning. Friends, when the news got to the king about Daniel's prayers, the king now discovers, ah, it was a trap. I was set up by his colleagues that don't like him. But it was too late. And the Bible says, the king tried all day long to release Daniel from the death penalty. But there was nothing he could do about it. At the end of the day, the Bible says, the king with a broken heart brought Daniel, I can imagine, with tears streaming down his cheeks. Daniel! I have been tricked. But because the law and the constitution cannot change, Daniel, regrettably, I will throw you into the lion's den. Now, 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 <laughs> can I just celebrate a little bit right there? Come with me, parenthetically, and let us look at the two nights. How many nights? How many nights? I can't hear you at the back. How many nights? Two nights. Let us look at the night of the king and the night of Daniel. The Bible says the king went to his palace, but it was not a palace in peace. Okay, okay, let me try again. Let me try again. The Bible says the king went to his palace, but it was not a palace in peace. Why? The Bible says he walked the floor. He was passing all night. He thought about Daniel in the lion's den. His boy was with the lions. The king did not want music. The king did not want entertainment. The king lost appetite. Now come with me microscopically and let us examine and zoom in the night of Daniel in the lion's den. Let me tell you what happened on that particular night. God in heaven dispatched an angel that flew down the den, arrived in the immediate past, faster than the force of gravity, and the angel locked the jaws of the lion. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I hear God leaning over the balcony of eternity, and God starts to whisper lion language. God starts to whisper Mufasa language. I hear God say to the lion, I have a servant that is going to spend the night with you. I have a servant who you crush in your home tonight. Therefore, Mr. Lion, I don't want you to hate him. I don't want you to harm him. I don't want you to lay a claw on him. I don't want you to lay a tooth on him. Lion, behave yourself. 
Look at the paradox now. Here's the paradox. Here is the conundrum and the enigma in the story. There was panic in the palace with the king. But there was peace in the lion's den with Daniel. Ah, ah, church of God, are we together? Let me try again. There was panic, pandemonium, frustration, high blood pressure, hypertension in the palace with the king. But there was peace that surpasses all human understanding in the lion's den with Daniel. I can imagine Daniel must have laid his head on the hairs of the lion and made the hairs of the lion as his pillow and blanket and napkin. And I can imagine Daniel st Daniel started singing this song. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Daniel continued to sing on the laps of the lion when the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh. My enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. How long? All the days of my life. How long? All the days of my life. How long? All the days of my life. What are you going to be doing in the house of God? I want to gaze at the beauty of the Lord and inquire of the Lord in his temple. Church of God, I'm done. I want to pray with someone right now. Is there anyone here saying, I wish I can be like Daniel? And you know what? We are weak people. Can I be, can I be real with you? Can I be real with you? We are weak people that can't survive without God. Friends, 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 the money that you have cannot fix all of your problems. You know what I've discovered? There are some things money can't fix. There are some things hospitals can't repair. There are some things banks cannot solve. There are some things in your life that only takes a God in heaven to operate and work miraculously. So I want to talk to someone here. Maybe you are at the outside. Maybe you are in the corridors. Maybe you are hearing me from the back. Maybe you are not within the vicinity of this building. Or maybe you are right here in front of me. Is there anyone here with a desire like Ernesto saying, Lord, plant my feet. <laughs> Plant my feet, Lord. You know why? Because my feet is weak. My feet is not strong. My feet is shaking. Plant my feet on Christ, the solid rock I stand. Because when I stand on Jesus, even when storms come, even when fierce temptations come, even as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, when my feet are rooted in Jesus, I will not be shaken. If it's your prayer from your heart and don't stand because you just want to make an impression. You know, nowadays, whenever people make an altar call, it's like it's customary. People just have to stand because if you won't stand, people will think like you're the worst sinner. You mean it as you stand. You are saying, Lord, give me power. You are saying, Lord, I want to be like Daniel. Lord, give me the tenacity. Lord, give me the determination. Tired of chameleon religion. Tired of coming to church whenever you feel like coming to church. Tired of showing up at church because my marriage is on fire of worshiping God on a part-time basis tired of not praying every day tired of being defeated by the devil every day tired of my weaknesses if that's your prayer stand I want to pray with you oh mio dio spiritu santo vieni nel nome di Jesu Cristo amen